another edition of MRN Out Loud presented by Moneyline and also brought to you by Hercules Tires. Ordinarily, we preview the upcoming races. This weekend would have been Homestead Miami Speedway, but with the postponements because of the continuing national emergency. We're just going to look at a variety of different things going on in the racing world. This is unprecedented. None of us have ever been through anything like this before, up to and including way back to 9-11. But one bright spot recently was the Replacements 100, an online race that was organized with a bunch of people in the NASCAR community. One of those was Parker Kligerman, who finished top five in that race. He owns an eSports team. He's a driver himself in the regular race cars and a team owner on the e-racing side. Parker, welcome to the program. And I also forgot about your duties with, with NBC. You're a busy guy right now, but this is a, <laughs> this is a strange time for us. How, uh, how weird does all this feel to you at the moment? Oh, it is weird, man. I, I, uh, you know, it's just it's such a tough time for everyone in the world and the country. And, you know, <clears throat> you mentioned it, it's kind of unprecedented what we're going through and, and esports has kind of been put in a spotlight right now, but I think we'd all be remiss if we didn't say that, you know, as cool as it is for all of us involved in the esport world that to, to get this spotlight put on us, you know, we're we're not blind to the fact that there is, you know, a large portion of this country and the world that's going through a very tough time. So, uh, you know, we're hoping that with these races we've been putting on, like the Replacements 100 and some of the other things we have coming up in the ENAS Park Coca-Cola iRacing Series, that, you know, at least we're offering just a little bit of a, of a, you know, a way to step away from all the bad things that are happening in the world right now and help us get through this time so we can get back to some real racing in the future. You and Jeff Burton are Burton Kligerman uh, Esports, and you guys have been in the Coca-Cola iRacing Series, as you mentioned, and the Replacements Limited. We need to mention that you are a top five finisher in that one, so a pretty good start for you there. But there's also uh, another effort coming up with the Replacements, uh, in addition to the Replacements, the the Invitational League that's going to come up this weekend. Tell me about that concept, and I understand you're not going to have your, your team drivers in it. You're actually going to race it, right? Tell me about that. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, just a little bit of background. So the E-NASCAR Coco iRacing Series is the top uh, eSport series in America for sim racing. Um, and it's the best sim, 40 sim racers in the world, essentially. And the prize pool is $300,000. And it's an incredible series of just the best guys in the world. What we're gonna, the Replacements 100 was basically a fun race put on by TJ Majors and Kevin Hamlin. Um, and it was inviting a lot of the NASCAR industry together, and it was so successful that, you know, I think iRacing and, and the NASCAR world were already working on this idea of a pro invitational. So what's coming on Sunday will be a race in which a lot of cup drivers, Xfinity drivers, truck series drivers, myself, Dale Jr., are all going to race in cup cars at Miami mm. and uh, against each other. And so it's essentially we're replacing the cup race with a uh, – <laughs> an invitational race on iRacing. So I think it's going to be a really cool event. I hope, you know, a lot of people are exposed to what we're doing in iRacing esports. They already had been this week. You know, I was looking at all the comments in the eNASCAR broadcast last night, and there were so many people saying, oh, I'm watching this for the first time. This is awesome. Wow, I didn't know this existed. This is so cool. You know, that's what we love to see. So the thing about esports, especially in motorsports, I think we should, you know, say is that we're not trying to replace real racing you know we're not trying to get in between it but what we're trying to do is effectively create a new pipeline for people to be a part of the sport that can't afford to be a part of it in the real world and you know not everybody can buy a race car but they can buy a, a, a setup for this because i was talking with josh williams the other day for nascar live and he said the range of what people have in terms of of getting involved is just you know a simple little clip on uh, desktop steering wheel to all the way to $30,000 setups, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. So, I mean, and the funny thing is you have those E NASCAR guys, the top of the world, and a lot of them race on a $300 wheel on a desk and a single monitor. Mm. And, you know, I mean, it's, and they're, they're making thousands of dollars and have the opportunity to make well over a hundred thousand dollars this year. So, uh, it's been, you know, it's incredible that, you know, the equipment isn't the big factor here. It really comes down to your skills in the sim. The, the cars are normally all the same. So, um, you know, you're really, it's really about the driver. So that's what's so cool. And I think, you know, you, you know, this Dale Jr. Myself, there's so many of us that are such big supporters of this because one, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And two, we all saw the benefits of it in our real racing careers and doing, you know, being able to race from our living room, essentially. And, 
and be doing all the things we do in real life. And it's so realistic. You can't help but just love it. I mean, the, the easy example right now is William Byron. That's how he came up, right? Yeah, well, that's, what I've, that's what I've heard on a computer, apparently. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, you know, what? the funny thing is, I, I was the same way. I started sim racing the same time I started real racing in go-karts back in 2002. So mm. I've been a part of it my whole life. Uh, it's, you know, it's really been the thing that I felt like allowed me to get to the level I got to with very little real racing experience. Um, you know, when I sat on the pole for my first ever Xfinity start in 2009, I had like probably 50 races in my whole career. Mm. Um, and, but I had raced thousands and thousands of hours online sim racing. So I've always been a big believer in it. And, uh, you know, that's why I have the team with Jeff Burton because, you know, it's a way for me to give back to something I love and believe in. And, uh, hopefully, you know, in this time, although it's a tough time, more people pay attention to it and they, they like it and they continue watching and seeing what we're doing there. And my goal is my dream is that whether you're 16 years old or 60 years old, you could be watching that eNASCAR race and think, you know what? If I start today, I could maybe get there. And for a small nominal fee, and if you're good enough, maybe in a year and a half, you could also be racing at the top of the sim racing world. That's an important point because it's not like you have to actually be racing. Fans can just click in and watch, right? How do they do that? Yeah. So it's broadcast across the internet uh, for free. So it's on Twitch. Um, and then it's also on eNASCAR.com. It's on Facebook Live. And it's on YouTube Live. So it's, when it's broadcasted on Tuesday nights at 9 o'clock, it's on all of those different platforms at the same time. So it's, it's, the, it's pretty easy to see. And then later this year, uh, the, the last six races of the season will be on NBCSN as well. So wow. if, you, if you've already watched NASCAR on NBCSN, you've got the channel. And uh, just stay tuned for the announcements when those will be. But, the, yeah, the last six will be on NBCSN. Now let's dig a little deeper. My understanding of the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing series is you guys are racing uh, live races every other Tuesday. You and Jeff Burton have a, a two-car, two-driver team, but you're going out and getting sponsors, and you mentioned the, the money involved. It's it's huge, but this 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 thing is really just imploded or not imploded, exploded this year and gotten huge. Yeah, it has. It really has. You know, we brought in teams for the first time last year, uh, which was a big thing I wanted. To- to happen for the last couple of years because I felt like I, you know, this series had been around for it's now this 11th year and I had watched it a lot and I'd actually sponsored some drivers in it and I paid attention to it, but I felt like it wasn't getting the attention it really deserved. Um, and I, I thought like, all right, what's the way to help it? Well, that's to bring in team owners and people in the NASCAR world that could help, you know, spread the message. And so that's why teams are brought in. That's what our goal is and our job. Our job is to help spread the message of this and that it exists and use our following to get more people to pay attention to it. And then it's the same thing with bringing Valvoline in, who became our primary sponsor on both cars this year, was, you know, they, they help us amplify that message. And, you know, they wanted to kind of dip their toe in esports and see what it was all about. And this is an easy, consumable way for them to do it because they know motorsports. It's a little different than going and doing a shooting game. So mm-hmm. uh, a little safer, I guess, in some respects for their mm-hmm. brand. So, you know, overall, it just worked well. And, and they've been an incredible partner. and They've really loved it. And as you mentioned, we've been off to a great start. Uh, Ashton Crowder, the driver of 77, won the second race of the season. He was mm-hmm. tied for the points lead going into last night. He's now second in points. And uh, Logan Clampett finished second. And both our drivers, I think we're tied to the team championship right now. So wow. we're uh, we're off to a great start to races in. Hopefully we can keep it up all year. Yeah, it's going to be a really cool deal to watch uh, and participate in. It'll give us something to uh, divert our attention from all the serious news going on right now. But let's talk a little bit uh, uh, personal stuff. You're also uh, a pit reporter and analyst for NBC. Obviously, it's uh, Fox time right now, and you guys would take over the second half of the season. But just for you personally, how things changed for you over the last week or so? It's different different in uh, different communities all across the country. What's it like for you right now? Oh, um, you know, it's, I, I don't think any, uh, any different than anyone else, you know, it's almost like a sudden stop, right? You're, mm-hmm. you're doing everything one day, you're, you're in the groove, you know, you're just going through the motions and then the next day everything comes to a stop. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's definitely been odd. I've, I've, I've practiced self quarantine for the last week or so, week and a half. So, I very rarely left my uh, my apartment building, and you know I think that just all of us trying to be smart about this and trying to help this go away as quick as possible. You know, the best thing we can do is stay home and and you know not be out and about. So I've tried to do that. I will say, you know, esports has become a hot topic, so my days have suddenly become 
incredibly filled with the esports stuff <laughs> um, and, and very busy, but, you know, less on the TV side. But, you know, once we get through this, I'm sure, uh, you know, all that will obviously pick back up and probably be crazier than ever because of, you know, missing this time that we uh, would be racing and doing things. So, um, you know, I, I think it's been an odd adjustment, but, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be in the position I am. And I know so many are going to be going through such a tough time through all this. And, and uh, I can't help but keep thinking about all of them and hope that we're just providing a bit of entertainment to take their mind off that. I'm glad you mentioned that about uh, the schedule and things like that, because uh, when Steve Phelps, the NASCAR president, addressed the media this week, one of the things he was saying is our intent is to still get all 36 races in. That may lead to some different things that we haven't seen before in terms of, you know, double headers or maybe midweek races or some of the things that they have been talking about before, but haven't had the, uh, the, the situation or the opportunity to try that may now become a reality. I mean, uh, there, there is a little bit of a silver lining there and that, you know, it's kind of making them try some things a little maybe earlier than they would have. It's going to be interesting to see how it all comes out. But one thing's for sure, when we do get back to racing, boy, is it going to be busy. <laughs> it is. Man, I, I, uh, I've, I've started looking at, you know, just the schedule ahead and thinking how could they place this and that sort of thing. So I don't uh, envy their position in trying to figure it all out. You know, the other thing you have to remember is that all sports came to a stop here. So mm -hmm. all sports are going to be vying for different time slots and positions and date slots. And it's just going to be absolutely insane. And I think you'll see sports that go way further later into the year than other than they ever have. I think, you know, ob absolutely. Could there be weekday races, double headers? I think all that's going to happen. And, you know, it's just going to be a crazy time. So um, I just, I look forward to when we can all come out of our homes again and get past the situation and, and experience that because, Hey, maybe we'll learn something new and maybe something will come from it. That is a positive that we can say, wow, this, you know, this worked out way better than we thought. And we should do that in the future. Yeah. And with the schedule set to change, probably relatively dramatically for 2021 anyway. Maybe this is the, the, the opportunity to try some things that could lead to, to, to different things that we have never even thought of before down the road. I think it's going to be a whole new world for us. And whether or not it's you can argue it's forced upon us now or not, it's definitely something that was kind of coming anyway. Yeah, no, you're right. It is. And, you know, one thing I've been talking to so many friends about and, you know, it's just become apparent is, you know, for my generation, you know, this, the great recession and this are basically going to define our generation, you know, in so many respects. And, and you mentioned the new world and it just feels like within the span of two, two or so weeks, we've entered a whole new world here. And I, I think, you know, nothing's out of the question in terms of what might change and what might be different and what we might learn from this experience. So um, on the sports side and on NASCAR, you know, I think that, that, that's double fold. So We'll uh, we'll see. This is just I you know I, I can't make any predictions on there to say this is just going to be one of the most interesting times ever once we get back going again. Yeah, one thing we've learned is any predictions are invalid at this point because as soon as you think you know something, it all changes again. Listen, Parker, before we let you go, I wanted to ask you about your your for lack of a better phrase, real driving. Uh, what schedule did you have this year before all this happened, and has all that changed now? Are you going to be behind the wheel some more this year, or is it everything kind of up in the air? Uh, we'll see. You know, I, I uh, you know, without doing the cup car this year, you know, that changed my plans a little bit. And then, um, you know, there's a small chance or chance right now that hopefully we'll be able to go and do some races with the 75 truck at Henderson Motorsports. But uh, nothing's confirmed at this moment. So we'll just we're taking it day by day and we'll see. And, uh, you know, if I do get the chance, it'd be great. And if not, we'll, uh, we'll continue on with everything else going on. So, uh, you know, it's, it's been an interesting time in my real racing career, but, you know, if I do get in the car, I look forward to it. All right, that's Parker Kligerman. He is co-owner with Jeff Burton of Burton Kligerman Esports in the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series, NBC pit reporter and analyst. Parker, thanks for your time, man. It's uh, it's unusual situation for all of us, and good luck to you getting through it, and hopefully you'll stay in touch and we'll all uh, make it through this together while we've got some online racing to keep us occupied until things start to get back to normal. Absolutely. And thanks for making this content still through all this. We need that. So yep. appreciate it. Absolutely. There you go. That's Parker Kligerman. We'll take a time out. When we come back, Jordan Anderson will join us to give us a perspective of maybe someone with one of the smaller teams and how they're weathering this. Did you know that banks collected over $15 billion in unnecessary bank fees last year? Come on, enough is enough. It's time we took back control of our finances. That's why Moneyline is proud to bring you the financial crew chief and to be a NASCAR sponsor. 
Look, no one knows more about hard work and pursuing their dreams than NASCAR fans, drivers, and teams. So we want to bring you the kind of banking that the big banks would never build, with features like zero fee checking and zero fee investment accounts. And because life is also meant for a join, with Money Lion, NASCAR fans get even more. We're giving away 1,500 NASCAR tickets to our members this year. Plus, you can get 5% cash back on NASCAR tickets, at track purchases, and all purchases at NASCAR.com. Learn more at MoneyLion.com or download our app. This is America's most powerful financial membership. Money Lion, here we roar. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTire.com. There, you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTire.com. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Time now for our financial crew chief segment presented by Moneyline, where we would normally hear from a crew chief about the upcoming race. But since there is no race this weekend, we wanted to take a little bit of a different tack with it. Jordan Anderson is joining us now. He is the owner driver for Jordan Anderson Racing in the NASCAR Gander RV and Outdoors Truck Series. And there's been a lot of talk about the, the difficulties that teams are having in these times where they're depending on continuing to race to, to make ends meet and to keep things going. So Jordan Anderson is joining us on the guest line now and Jordan just wanted to say hello and thanks for taking the time with us and uh, man these are some crazy times and I imagine they are for you as well yeah thank you Woody it's uh it's no doubt a you know a different and difficult time for all of us whether you're in sports or small business or going to school or uh you know whatever line of work you're in or if you're retired I mean from from kids to old this is affecting us all and uh you know, it's uh, it's something I don't think any of us could have ever expected or thought was going to happen. But seeing how uh, quickly it's all escalated, I'm thankful that uh, NASCAR made the decision they they did this week that has us uh, waiting until May to, to go back racing. Because I know uh, you know the safety of our our fans and all us drivers and all the crew guys. We just don't know how bad this is just yet. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Take us back to last week before everything went uh, absolutely bonkers when. We looked like we were going to race in Atlanta. Then it was going to be with no fans. You guys were originally on a double header plan for Saturday with the Xfinity Series. Then they said, okay, truck teams, you guys need to be ready to race Friday night. And then uh, they wound up postponing everything. What was that like for you from a, from a team owner and driver perspective? I had, I imagine it was just nuts. The, the driver's side is not, not too bad. It's the team, the team owner side of me that, uh, you know, kind of takes the, the hit on all those things. That's where all my gray hairs are coming from. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, as we as we were leaving the hotel, we drove down the night before just because I know it's only about a four-hour drive from us, but we wanted to go ahead and drive down the night before just in case traffic. And we knew there was a lot of this going on, so we didn't know what was going to happen on the interstate. So we went ahead and drove down the night before and got up that morning, and, and we got ready to leave the hotel, and one of my guys said, hey, did you see the news this morning? And I And I missed it just being busy getting ready to leave the hotel and he said look at the look at the new schedule that's been pushed out and it was where we had moved to a one-day show you know no practice straight to qualifying race and you know we had done something that like that before back in kentucky i think it was 2015 mm -hmm. um so i was like all right you know it's it's a new challenge for us so we get to the racetrack and we go stand outside the garage area like we we do and you can kind of tell there's some, some uneasiness from everybody about not sure what's what's next and the garage area was uh, supposed to open at 11 and 11 comes and then 11 10 comes and then 11 20 comes and we know something's up yeah. and that was when uh about 20 30 minutes later um uh, one of the nascar officials came out and said hey you know here's the decision we've made in respect to everything going on we're we're going to postpone everything you know you guys get your haulers loaded up sorry you know this is this is off until further notice so um for me on the team owner side you know uh, a big gut hits my stomach uh pretty immediately because we're uh we're a small team there's there's six of us that are on this team we're we're bigger than we were a year ago but still small in terms of a lot of these other teams that, that race um we operate really from race to race we operate off of the the purse money that comes in from from where we finish we operate off of sponsorship dollars that come in from each race and uh 
Uh, and that's, you know, a, that's a race by race it. thing, right? It's not like a, a company that sponsors you just cuts you a big check at the beginning of the year and says, here you go, right? That's not how it works. I wish. I know, yeah, yeah. I know those, I bet. Those, those, those exist out there, and, and we've got uh, a couple of our partners that, that kind of do that over the bigger part of the season. But for the most part, we, we really race race by race. And just coming off two weeks off, you know, we didn't run Fontana. We didn't run Phoenix. So we were, we'd already come off of two weeks off. And now to have three weeks off, um, you know, from Atlanta and Miami and Texas, We've, uh, I, I said, I won't lie to you. I sat uh, in front of a spreadsheet on my computer all day for probably 12 or 13 hours yesterday, running through some different scenarios. And, and right now I've got my guys uh, working all this week. We're going to work all next week. You know, we're, we're taking all the precautions to make sure that, you know, we keep the shop clean and everybody's washing their hands, uh, you know, more than they would have before. And um, trying to make sure that we keep everybody space. Cause like I said, it's, it's not a lot of us in the shop, but there's, there's still a small amount we're trying to limit what we do and, and take those precautions. But um, we hope that the plan for all this is that NASCAR sold us is we are going to go back racing here and here in eight weeks. Once we pass through this eight month uh, break, the CDC has, has recommended for us. So we are planning on, on going back for race. And that's kind of been a, a rallying cry for our guys to get through this, un, you know, this unsure time, this tough time is, you know, Hey, we have this to look forward to, to, to get back to, to normalcy eight months from now. Hopefully all this stuff will, will run its course and, and, and things will slow down as you've seen it kind of amp up around the world. And then kind of, I know there were some, some reports that came out from, from China today that, that, that I think the numbers that were getting um, reported had started kind of to decline a little bit. So we can only hope looking at their two month timetable that that two month timetable for us will, will run the same course. So I've got our guys here in the shop We're we're finishing trucks. We're trying to get ahead because we know on our end, when we do go back racing, there's going to be five races for us that are going to be added back in the schedule. You know, NASCAR told us that when we go back racing, they are planning on, on having, you know, business as usual. Hopefully we'll have the fans back in the stands. They're going to have all the precautions they're going to take, as they've talked about. But we're going to have five races added in our on our schedule that wouldn't have normally been there. So we're, we're going to be doing maybe some double headers, some midweek races. So for a small team, we're just trying to take advantage of this time off and uh, you know, work to get ahead. But I'm, I'm very blessed and very fortunate that uh, we've got some sponsors that I, that I leaned on um, through this tough time to say, hey, you know, I need some help on, on payroll. Because a lot of teams, unfortunately, have had to, uh, to cut some people and make those tough decisions. But we're going to try to, because we have such a small group of guys, we're going to try to keep everybody working through the, through the difficult time here to try to help their families out and, and just get through this. From another perspective, it does kind of give the sport an opportunity to try some things, as you mentioned, that have been talked about before, like some midweek races. I know we have Eldora now and maybe some double headers and stuff. Is that something that uh, that you, even before all this, had been a, a proponent of? Because it's been talked about uh, you know, in, in, in projections and scenarios for a while now, but maybe this is the opportunity, a silver lining, to try some of these things that have been debated for, for weeks or months or years. No, it was out of doubt. And and the way that I told my guys and the way we've tried to look at this is anytime you got a situation like this, whether it's a, a natural disaster, uh, you know, like this, that uh, is a plague is hitting us with a virus or, you know, we're trying to get through a time where we don't have sponsorship or we're working through all kinds of things. You got to choose faith over fear. And um, I've got a tight group of guys that we know that our, our faith is at the forefront of all we do. And um, sometimes, you know, you look at these tough situations, how can we come out of these better? And I think for not just racing as a whole, this is going to change life for everybody across the country. And if we can look at this as a situation of, you know, how can we, we do a better job of, of how we live our day-to-day -day lives and how we act? I mean, this is kind of going to be a reset button for, for all of us and how we live. And you look at NASCAR and the sport, this is going to give us, like you said, an opportunity to, to try some different things to be able to make all this possible. Uh, you know, these midweek races and the double headers, you, you saw that the Cup Series is already going to have the, the double header at Pocono this year. I, I look at our schedule right now, right off the bat, you look at uh, Richmond, you look at Texas. That was, uh, those are two races that I think you might see it happen. We were supposed to run Richmond here in the spring in a couple weeks. I'm, I'm going to bet you're going to probably see us run at the fall, a triple header probably. 
Uh, and then you look at Texas. We were supposed to run there next weekend. You're going to probably see us go there maybe when IndyCar's there and run a doubleheader. Mm. Or maybe we run with uh, with IndyCar, and then we run with a uh, tripleheader with Cup and Xfinity in the fall. So uh, I am I think my thing that I'm most thankful for is that NASCAR has come up to us and said, we are going to make these races up. Because it really, for me, it would have been devastating for a team if, if, if they had come out and said, hey, we're just going to cancel these races because – that's that's lost purse money. That's uh, you know we actually had a couple sponsor commitments for some races that are going to be postponed. So I'm thankful that they're they're going to work hard enough on their end to schedule this. And and I know that this is going to affect the guys that sell beer and chicken at the racetrack and hot dogs and the guys that work security at the racetrack. So hopefully by you know NASCAR being able to make these races up will help a lot of those people and help us you know these small teams like us and even the bigger teams on the the back end once we get through all this. Yeah, absolutely. Life is uh, definitely changing as we speak. But on a personal level, Jordan, uh, racing aside, you're in South Carolina and um, most states and most local governments are uh, kind of uh, doing things differently here and there based on their current situations. How has life changed for you uh, just as a a citizen in South Carolina over these last uh, this last week or so? Yeah, you know, we, we've got our, our shop up in, in Statesville and between South Carolina and North Carolina, where, where my family is, you know, we've definitely uh, tried to take some precaution on what we do. And, and you know, I, I think now a lot of the restaurants around here have gone to preferred carry out only or take out only. But, you know, for us, we, we bought a lot of food um, to prepare for Atlanta and uh homestead you know we we buy a lot of frozen food and and stuff like that and keep it in a freezer here at the shop and then we take it to the track with us and cook so we all took that home so we've we've been uh cooking at home a lot more often than we would and just trying to uh be aware of the situation because uh i've got um my both my mom and dad are, are in their 60s i've got two grandfathers i got one of my grandfathers that's actually in a in a nursing home right now and we we can't go see him because of this so it's definitely hit hit home for, for us on that front, but just trying to, trying to be careful and just hope that, you know, we all take the precautions that we can to make sure that, uh, this, this doesn't get to us or affect anybody that we love and that it's, that it's close to. So I think the, the biggest thing as tough as this, um, you know, the, the quarantining is that, that they've asked us to do. It's for the, the best interest of those that, that might get affected with, you know, um, immune diseases or, or already maybe sick with, um, different problems with their lungs or have fought through different things. So I, I don't think it's so much for the, those of us that it's healthiest to keep those that are already on edge from, from getting this and it possibly um, hurting them. So trying to do all we can to be careful because we've got guys on our team that have family members that are sick and, and things like that. So we're just trying to be careful as, as much as we can and be aware of it. And, um, you know, I know the state of North Carolina has come out and said that they like to see groups smaller than 10 limited to that number. And so we're we're very aware of that here in our shop and, and keeping the space that we have. So, um, you know, all we can do, Woody, is just pray that uh, this this all runs its cycle. And I know there was some testing done for for vaccines this week. And um, you know, you and I were talking about before we came on air. This is a this is an unknown for all of us. And I know for me personally, you know, from from the side of of where I am and my family and my guys, you know, we've just taken heart that. Uh, you know, God's going to provide for us through this time that that's, uh, you know, we got to stay tough through this and and not let our spirits get too, too troubled that, you know, if you just kind of give up on what you're doing and just say, this is never going to get better. It's, it's hard to ever overcome anything. So we're, we're trying to keep our spirits high. We know how serious of a situation this is, but we've got faith that, uh, you know, here in the near future, we will get back to to normal normalcy in our life. And that's definitely been a, been a rallying cry for us through this, uh, these tough times to say, Hey, you know what? God's got something better on the other side of all this to get back to, to life as we knew it. And um, that's definitely what we're keeping our eyes on as we work through and process and, and navigate through these these uncharted waters. I'm glad you mentioned that because that, uh, especially the part about the, the nursing homes, because I'm sure you've seen on the social media uh, uh, outlets the, the effort that the Wood Brothers are kind of spearheading to get some pads, some iPads and that type of thing into the nursing homes for people who can't visit their relatives right now to make sure that they stay safe. This is something that the the NASCAR community has always done. I, I, I get that this is completely different than any other situation that we face, but when there have been uh, tragic situations in the past, the NASCAR community has kind of rallied together. And I'm just curious as some of your talks with maybe some of your, your colleagues and, and other teams and things like that, it seems like that same spirit is still there. 
Yeah, without a doubt. We've actually, I've got two of our sponsors that we're, we're kind of working through all the details now um, of trying to help, you know, some of these local communities that are hitting hard. I mean, uh, the area of, of states so where our shop is and down in Columbia, South Carolina, where I grew up, I mean, those, those areas are, are close to home and there's, you know, from, from, you know, people needing food and, uh, you know, basic essentials of life. I mean, sometimes they can't get those things because they can't leave their homes, especially the elderly or our families are hit hard that, you know, they work and now their kids are at home because school's been canceled. So a lot of families have, have gotten really hard at this and it kind of puts it in a bigger picture of, you know, we've got to, got to put our, our focus on, on racing further down the ladder now because it, it comes to focusing on making sure that people are, are okay and, and getting to these times. And we've, We've got a couple of my sponsors that are on board that um, we're kind of in the early stages of figuring out how, how best we can help, but we want to donate some of our resources to some of these communities that are hitting hard, and, and that's something that we're working through right now because we do realize how, how grave this situation is and how serious it is, and we want to help out you know, however we can to help people get through this because I saw it firsthand with my grandfather. My, my dad actually went over there yesterday, and they're not letting anybody in the building, mm-hmm. but fortunately my grandfather had a um, – a window on the first floor that my dad was able to walk through and they were open, able to open the door and then see them. So, you know, I, I definitely feel for all those that are, that are in situations like that, that are lonely or don't have anybody to, to see because of all this. So, um, it definitely hits, hits, hits you, you know, you right in the feels when you, when you talk about things like that, but we're going to do all we can do to, to help those in, in our communities get, get through this because, uh, I know there's a lot of people that are, are struggling through, uh, through these, these times right now. Jordan, we got your Twitter address on the screen, but how can folks keep up with you and what's going on and some of those efforts that you're talking about as they come to fruition to let people know what's happening? Yeah, definitely. We, we've got my, my Twitter is, is J66Anderson on uh, on Instagram as well, at Jordan Anderson Racing, and that same same username on, on Facebook as well. So, um, you know, we're going to keep working through all that stuff. Our, our guys here are, are working through everything, and, and I actually had a couple guys. You know, you, you got to kind of – have something to keep your your spirits lifted up through these these times and um got my eye racing set up hooked mm-hmm. up yesterday and i know i had a lot of the, the fans that reached out and asked me about um you know was i going to hop on there at all and so hopefully this is a cool opportunity to kind of give back to the fans some because i i to be honest with you it's been so crazy the last year uh, my eye racing setup had probably about an inch of dust on it because <laughs> i didn't have time to to get on there with with keeping the shop going and moving and all these things but you know, a bunch of fans had reached out, so I'm going to try and get that set up to go out there and, and race online with those guys a little bit. And, um, you know, we've, we've all got to gotta stay positive through this. And like I said earlier, not let our, our spirits get your trouble. But, um, you know, this is uh, – racing's a tight-knit tight knit community, and this has um, definitely hit us all pretty hard. But all we can do is to uh, to work together the best we can to make sure that we all get through this time, look out for one another, and – so that when, when this all clears, we can get back to doing what we love and, and seeing everybody at the racetrack every week. Yeah, absolutely. And sooner or later, this too shall pass like uh, most of the, the bigger things in our lives have. But, uh, Jordan, we appreciate your time. We wanted to talk with someone uh, in directly uh, relationship to one of the teams and not necessarily one of the giant teams, but somebody uh, and a lot of them are in your same boat. So we really appreciate your time and giving us some insight and perspective. And uh, stay safe and uh, keep in touch. Thanks, Woody. Like guys, you guys be safe, and everybody listen. You guys stay safe, Brand. For for everybody, this has hit hard, and and like I said, I, I can't wait today that um, get to see you at the track again and see everybody else, and we can get back racing. But um, thank you everybody for for the prayers as as we work through this, and hope you guys stay safe as well, and uh, we'll be seeing you soon. Absolutely, thank you, man. We look forward to seeing you really soon. Thanks, Woody. There you go. Jordan Anderson, that's our Financial Crew Chief segment presented by Money Lion, the world's most powerful financial membership. Money Lion, here we roar. A timeout when we come back. Mike Bagley will join us. Next time those engines roar, don't just get pumped up. Get 5% cash back with Money Lion. Our members get 5% cash back on up to $2,000 in annual purchases of tickets to a NASCAR race from authorized ticket sellers. You'll also get 5% off any at-track purchases and all purchases on NASCAR.com. Just use your Moneyline debit card and it couldn't be easier. Join the world's most powerful financial membership, Moneyline. Here we roar. Sir, are you aware you were going 40 miles an hour? This is a residential area. 
Sure, but I'm on my lawnmower. Wait, am I getting a ticket? No, I've just never seen anyone top nine miles an hour on one of those bad boys. And mow their entire lawn in 30 seconds? What got into you? Well, it did fuel up at Sunoco this morning. At Sunoco, we know how to fuel peak performance. We've been doing it for American Racing for over 50 years. Fuel your best. Back on MRN Out Loud, and as we've done all season long, we're meeting with various MRN media representatives to give you an update on what they have going on. And this week, it's our friend Mike Bagley from his secure compound in Florida. Baggy, how's it going there? Oh, we're hanging in, Woody. We've, uh, we've got all of our rations. We're hunkered down, and we're practicing social distancing, obviously, right here. And yep. we're trying to stay away from everybody and do what they tell us to do down here. I uh, understand your coffee order is good, so you've got that going for you. It's got the notification, the K-Cups are in and ready for pickup, so <laughs> coffee is ready and <laughs> we're going to be good. We well, can... stop the... Coffee, obviously, one of the most important yes, things here. Absolutely. Uh, on, a, on a more serious note, Mike, this is uh, something that we talked about on NASCAR Live. This is just so unprecedented for everybody. This is something that none of us have ever been through in our lifetimes, and it's kind of just strange, as I imagine it is for you as well, navigating through it all. What are you? What are you doing? What are you? What are you changing? Well, it's hard to believe that when we opened up the season in Daytona for the 500, that it was we didn't see this coming. I mean, we started our season where everything was going good, we're clicking off races, and all of a sudden this thing hit us, and then. Now we've been thrown into these uncharted waters and we're just trying to do the best that we can. And, you know, everybody's looking for answers. And unfortunately, there aren't many answers to be had because it seems like that the landscape is changing by the day. Mm -hmm. um, as far as like down here, you know, we're told not to congregate more than 10 people at a time. Restaurants are closed. Bars are closed. Let's tell you something. We're going to have some of the cleanest houses in all of the world coming up because there's nothing else to do except, you know, obviously dial up MRN.com, watch you on MRN Out Loud, watch TV. And it's um, this is it, it's, it's just I've never been through anything like this. Um, my relatives who've been around longer than me have never been through anything like this. And um, we're just trying to feel our way through. It used to be things were changing maybe a week at a time or every yeah. other day. We've gone from daily, hourly, to sometimes it, things change every 15 minutes, and we're just trying to do the best we can to hang on, just like everybody else out there. One of the noteworthy things this week, Steve Phelps, the NASCAR president, uh, met with the media yesterday. Uh, folks are watching this on a Thursday. This was this was on a on a Tuesday, uh, and discussed where they stand. And uh, understandably, he admitted that there are some things that they just simply don't know yet. But the big takeaways, at least from my standpoint, was they do want to try to get all 36 races in. They'd like to try to keep the playoffs intact. They're talking with teams about various financial situations, scheduling situations. But there is just a lot right now that they don't know. What did you take away from it? Well, one of my biggest takeaways, Woody, was that the openness to basically throw out whatever playbook that we had and create one on the fly. Um, when we go to make up races, it's very possible that we may race into December if we can. We've got some warm weather climates that may allow us to do that. I think everything is on the table right now, whether it be doubleheader races, um, whether it be doubleheader midweek races. We're going to have to think outside the box, and I'm confident that we've got the leadership in the sport that we can do that. It's just we can't get anything in place right now because we don't know. Well, yeah. you know, we're, we're we're targeting coming back in Martinsville, but we don't know if it's going to be Martinsville, if it's going to be later or whatever. But I think that by not handcuffing ourselves and 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 basically shackling ourselves to what we've done in the past, there's a willingness to open up and maybe think outside that box and do whatever we need to do. Number one, to get racing back to the fans, which I yeah. know they're cra craving too. But when we do it, perhaps maybe being a little unique in what we do, and perhaps maybe this situation may provide us the opportunity to further think outside the box and maybe think about things that we can do on a daily basis or on a weekly basis as far as maybe – that doubleheader midweek action or pairing up with other forms of motorsports. I think everything is on the table. And I think that you need that mindset because we're dealing with something that's so delicate and something so uncertain right now. I think one advantage that this sport has is that unlike, say, for example, basketball, which most folks are aware the NCAA tournament has been uh, put on hiatus this year or canceled this year, is, is the athletes in racing don't necessarily have direct physical contact with one another. But – 
you do have teams congregating together. You do have officials in the area. So when you have situations where the government is asking us to uh, limit contact to groups of no more than 10 or so, uh, it, it still makes it a challenge to try and put that together. There are some advantages, but there are still some things that they have to keep in the back of their mind as well to make sure that everybody is safe. Yeah, and it's, you know, I mean, the the numbers that we hear are 10 and 6. No more than 10 people six feet away from each other. It's kind of hard to do with what we do. Mm-hmm. We can practice it the same that we can. But, you know, you turn on the evening news, your anchors used to be side by side, and now, you know, they're spread apart. I was watching the Today Show this morning. Uh, Savannah Guthrie's at home, Al Roker's in his kitchen, and Hoda's in the studio. So it's like, yeah. you know, we're, yeah. we're having to do things a lot differently while still at the same time, try to produce content, which is what obviously we're doing here on MRN.com. Another tidbit I wanted to make sure we touched on is NASCAR also uh, said there's a complete ban on any kind of testing, including wind tunnel stuff, including simulator stuff, official. Now, I'm not talking about home computers and things like that, but the official stuff, all that has been put on hold. They don't want somebody kind of going behind the scenes and getting an advantage whenever we do come back. Well, and, and a lot of people are asking, well, why are they doing that? Why can't they go to the wind tunnel? There's nothing else to do. Well, there's the car that's in the wind tunnel and maybe a couple of guys, but there's a lot of people behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. It's like in what we do here at MRN.com, what I do on Sirius XM NASCAR radio, just because you hear something on the air and you think it's just one or two people, there's a stack of people behind the scenes, and that's to protect those people, those people that have to get in those close spaces, mix down the products, obtain the content, whether it's wind tunnel testing, the simulator. You just don't you know, put in an access code, walk in, turn the computer on, sit down and go. There's a team of people that are involved in that as well. So, And I also think that perhaps maybe it's a so one doesn't get a leg up on the other type of scenario to where maybe you have the ability to go to a wind tunnel and a simulator. That is an offshoot of the primary of keeping people away from each other, making sure that no one gets too close to each other, considering the guidance we're getting from the CDC and the World Health Organization. You mentioned uh, Sirius, your your duties on the morning drive, you and Pete Pistoni. There are there have been some changes there as well. Can you run the folks through what's going on with, uh, with your show? Yeah, we did Monday's show as we normally did. We got word Monday afternoon that uh, there was going to be some change and, and we were taken off the air for Tuesday. And then over the course of Tuesday, you know, these plans are fluid. You know, they, they keep changing. We were able to, uh, I was able to MacGyver a setup here in my studio <laughs> to where I saw the I pictures. Connected, <laughs> I, I connected. No, kudos to you. That's fantastic. It's all about being innovative. <laughs> I had wires going here, over there, and all this stuff. Uh, yep. I, I had to bring Eden out of my computer from Skype, and I, I have a mixing board here in uh, in my studio, and, um, and then take that and re- record it into my phone and then put it into a computer and all that stuff. We're able to get all that sorted out, and uh, a lot of folks are asking, well, well, why are you off the air? Why are you off the air? Again, it goes back to people behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Whenever you hear a show, say on Sirius XM, there are a couple of producers in a studio in that one channel for that one show. We have many shows, and there are many channels, and basically they don't want the people in the office. It's like get people home and get people out of harm's way. So we've had to go to plans not only B and C but D, E, F, and G, uh, and and try to come up with a way that we can still generate content like we're doing here, mm-hmm. while at the same mm-hmm. time protecting the staff that are hunkered down in the New York studios and the DC studios of Sirius XM. So basically, we've gone from a four-hour show Monday through Friday, seven to eleven a.m. Eastern time, to now a one-hour recorded podcast type show that we record the day before. So, for instance, mm-hmm. we will record at four in the afternoon, and then that will be mixed and produced and be put on the air at 7 o'clock the next morning, replaying it throughout the day. And all the shows are on the channel are doing the same thing, uh, whether it be you know, Brad Gilly and Larry Mack in the midday, Dave Moody in the afternoon with Speedway and Claire B. Lang at night. So, again, when, you, when you're given lemons, you try to make lemonade. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's not just the NASCAR channel. It's all the sports channels are doing the same thing, right, or similar. And absolutely, for the most part. And they're in a transition as well. They're trying to get – they're trying to get – um, everybody out of there, but there is a transition phase because they have a continuity plan to make sure that everything is covered for when that happens. So that's what they're dealing with right now, um, and that's what we're dealing with on the SiriusXM side, just like we're dealing with here at MRN. 
All right. Well, Mike, we appreciate you making a little time for us. I know with all your uh, your new engineering duties, you have a lot to get done. Got coffee to go pick up, but uh, we appreciate your time and be safe, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. Keep in touch. And uh, thank you all out there for checking us out on MRN.com. Hang in there, folks. We will get back to racing and we will get back to normalcy. We just don't know when that's going to be. Call me anytime, Woody. I'm here for you. <laughs> all right. There you go. Mike Bagley. You can also catch him right here on the Motor Racing Network every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time on NASCAR Live. After the show airs live, it replays on the MRN.com website. You can check all that out there. No racing schedule to run uh, through for you this week as we are uh, in a postponed situation, expecting to return on uh, May the 8th, that weekend of May the 8th in Martinsville, the race under the lights right now. That's the, the tentative plan, provided nothing else changes. And as you know, it's a fluid situation. Things are changing rapidly. Stay with MRN.com. We'll bring you the very latest updated information. NASCAR Today airing uh, weekday evenings on stations uh, all across the country. We'll update you there as best we can. And we wanted to say thanks for sticking with us and uh, getting through this difficult time with us as we try and disseminate the information we have as best we can. We want to make sure that you know that MRN Out Loud is presented by Money Lion and also brought to you by Hercules Tires. Until next week, I'm Woody Kane saying thanks for joining us again, everyone. 